In terms of flexibility in gaming, no other platform can match the PC. It's a platform with a lot of advantages for those that can overcome the often daunting price tag. Hi there again guys, welcome back to Cody's Playground. Today, I will give you my top 10 best offline PC games that you will enjoy playing for sure. Let's get down to it right away. As a bonus, while consoles require a subscription fee for online gaming, the majority of PC games have free online. Regardless, many people find the most enjoyment in offline PC games. Here's one classic game that is surely one of everyone's favorite. The Sid Meier's Civilization Games. Civilization VI is a turn-based strategy video game in which one or more players compete alongside computer-controlled AI opponents to grow their individual civilization from a small tribe to control of the entire planet across several periods of development. This can be accomplished by achieving one of several victory conditions, all based on the 4x gameplay elements which are, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. One noteworthy change to Civilization VI is a religion condition that allows you to win the game by converting the world to your religion. As a turn-based real-time strategy game, Civilization VI has few close competitors. Raising a civilization from the feudal ages to the modern era is too fun in Civilization VI. The game can be played offline for competitive matches against smart AI. Civilization VI has relatively low requirements compared to other leading PC games. This is one game you can't miss. From the same developer as Baldur's Gate comes Divinity Original Sin 2. At first glance, Divinity Original Sin 2 appears to take after games like Diablo 3, yet it is so much more than a loot-based game. Divinity Original Sin 2 masterfully incorporates RPG elements that blend well with its turn-based combats. The scale of the game is massive. Dialogue is engaging and most players can find something to appreciate in the game. Using a controller is easy and straightforward with this offline PC game. It's a must-have PC RPG. As with Divinity Original Sin, players can play solo or with up to three others in their party. Several pre-made characters with backstories are available to the player. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is an action role-playing game with a third-person perspective. Players control Geralt of Rivia, a monster slayer known as a Witcher. Geralt walks, runs, rolls and dodges, and, for the first time in the series, jumps, climbs and swims. The expansive world of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt gives us pause. We can't help but be overwhelmed by the scale of the world outside the main story. This is a game where you can log hundreds of hours without diminishing its quality. The enemy, weapon, and town variety makes the game a masterpiece. As an offline-only game, what it does it does perfectly. There is no need for online as it would only take away from the game. If you only play one role-playing game this year, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is a solid choice. This overlooked gem is a roguelike metroidvania that in some ways is comparable to the Dark Souls series. Players will have to combat fierce enemies while avoiding the obstacles of the game. Falling in a pit of spikes can be frustrating, which is why not everyone will appreciate Dead Cells. Before you play Dead Cells, it's worth noting that the game is very unforgiving. Dying in the game forces you to start over from the beginning. This game is one of my favorite. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is an action-adventure game played from a third-person view. Compared to From Software's own Souls series, the game features fewer role-playing elements, lacking character creation and the ability to level up a variety of stats, as well as having no multiplayer elements. It does, however, include gear upgrading, a skill tree, and limited ability customization. Rather than attacking to whittle an enemy's health points, combat in Sekiro revolves around using a katana to attack their posture and balance instead, which eventually leads to an opening that allows for a single killing blow. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the winner of over 50 awards and nominations. The title of the game not only sounds catchy but also describes its gameplay. 
players have two lives in Sekiro Shadows die twice. Two lives may give the impression that the game is easy, but guess again. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is one of the most challenging games of the decade. Boss fights will take multiple attempts, even if you're well-versed in the Dark Souls series. Bioshock The Collection contains all three titles in the Bioshock series which are Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite. The games are first-person shooters, with a focus on story and character customization. Players wield guns and superpower granting genetic modifications called plasmids. Also included in the collection are the game's single-player content originally released as exclusives or downloadable content packs, including Bioshock 2, Minerva's Den and Bioshock Infinite, Burial at Sea. Neatly packaged in one collection is the Bioshock Trilogy remastered and primed to play. The Bioshock franchise is considered one of the greatest in gaming. Its refined gameplay mechanics combined with its story that twists and turns make it a must-play offline PC game. With villains like Andrew Ryan in the original Bioshock and Zachary Hale Comstock in Bioshock Infinite, there is plenty of subject matter to keep players enthralled. According to NYTimes.com, approximately 200 people worked on Bioshock Infinite. According to the game's executive producer Marty Stratton, the key principles of Doom's single-player mode are, badass demons, big effing guns, and moving really fast. The game allows players to perform movements such as double jumps and ledge climbs throughout levels of industrial and corporate fields of a Union Aerospace Corporation research facility on Mars and then levels of hell, as the combat system puts emphasis upon momentum and speed. The approach is known as push-forward combat, which discourages players from taking cover behind obstacles or resting to regain health while playing from the Doom Slayer's perspective. Players instead collect health and armor pickups by killing enemies. Glory Kills is a newly introduced melee execution system, when enough damage has been dealt to an enemy, the game will highlight it and allow the player to perform a quick and violent melee takedown, rewarding the player with small health recovery. The game features a large arsenal of weapons which can be collected and freely switched by players throughout the game and require no reloading. Recurring weapons of the series also make a return, including the Super Shotgun and BFG 9000. The BFG has a very small ammunition capacity, but is extremely powerful. Similarly, the Chainsaw returns, but has been reintroduced as a special-use weapon that relies upon fuel, but can be used to instantly cut through enemies and provide a greater-than-normal drop of ammunition for the player. Dark Souls 3 is an action role-playing game played in a third-person perspective, similar to previous games in the series. According to lead director and series creator Hidetaka Miyazaki, the game's gameplay design followed closely from Dark Souls 2. Players are equipped with a variety of weapons to fight against enemies, such as bows, throwable projectiles, and swords. Shields can act as secondary weapons but they are mainly used to deflect enemies' attacks and protect the player from suffering damage. Developer from Software proved for the third time in a row that they know how to make action-adventure role-playing games. Sure, there have been spin-offs like Bloodborne and Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, but those would not have existed if it weren't for Dark Souls. Dark Souls 3 is slightly more fast-paced than its predecessors. Boss fights, however, are just as grueling and unforgiving. Dark Souls 3 is recommended for experienced gamers because of its difficulty level. Yet for those willing to grind it out, Dark Souls 3 can be outrageously entertaining. In Portal, the player controls the protagonist, Chell, from a first-person perspective as she is challenged to navigate through a series of rooms using the Aperture Science handheld Portal device, or Portal Gun, under the watchful supervision of the artificial intelligence GLaDOS. The Portal Gun can create two distinct Portal Ends, orange and blue. The portals create a visual and physical connection between two different locations in three-dimensional space. Neither end is specifically an entrance or exit, all objects that travel through one portal will exit through the other. An important aspect of the game's physics is momentum redirection and conservation. As moving objects pass through portals, they come through the exit portal at the same direction that the exit portal is facing and with the same speed with which they pass through the entrance portal. 
For example, a common maneuver is to place a portal some distance below the player on the floor, jump down through it, gaining speed in freefall, and emerge through the other portal on a wall, flying over a gap or another obstacle. Believe it or not, Valve isn't just the owner of the Steam storefront. The Valve Corporation is also known for creating instant classics like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, and Half-Life 2. Portal is one of the few Valve Corporation games that is single-player. Although Portal 2 has online co-op, the story was more intriguing in the first Portal. The game is very polished and is fun from start to end. The objective is to solve a series of puzzles while being directed by GLaDOS, an advanced AI. Even though Portal released in 2007, the game feels like it hasn't aged a day. Now, this one deserves to be on the top list. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is an action role-playing game, playable from either a first or third person perspective. The player may freely roam over the land of Skyrim which is an open-world environment consisting of wilderness expanses, dungeons, caves, cities, towns, fortresses, and villages. Players may navigate the game world more quickly by riding horses, paying for a ride from a city's stable or by utilizing a fast travel system which allows them to warp to previously discovered locations. The game's main quest can be completed or ignored at the player's preference after the first stage of the quest is finished. However, some quests rely on the main storyline being at least partially completed. Fans of the series are eagerly waiting for The Elder Scrolls VI since the series is arguably at its best when it's offline single player. The Elder Scrolls Online has a sizable fan base, but the difference between The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and The Elder Scrolls Online is night and day. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is one of the best games of all time because of its immersive quests, beautiful landscapes, and enemy variety. The game regenerates quests, so there is virtually no end to the game. And there you have it. The top 10 best offline PC games that you can enjoy on your own. I am very sure you're going to love it. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite on this list. If you want to see more interesting videos about gaming, go hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. Please also leave a like on this video. It really helps me out. See you in the next videos.